I want you tonight to turn with me again to Ezekiel chapter 38, and I want to try and finish this here tonight. Last time, two weeks ago, we dealt with who are the merchants of Tarshish. I didn't get to finish it. I tried to pack it into an hour and a half. It was very, very difficult, but I want to finish that here tonight and maybe finish this very brief series it certainly has been in line with what is happening in our world with Russia and everything else. We're not dealing with everything concerning Ezekiel's war. All we're showing from Ezekiel 38 and what we've dealt with in the three previous messages is that the entire stage is being set of nations worldwide in a very unique and remarkable way. In a way, in fact, that has never happened in thousands of years of history, we have reached a point that is utterly unique in history. And you and I are now watching nations being set in place, preparing themselves to play a role. They'll be for a brief moment in time. And so I want to just read one scripture here tonight in Ezekiel 38 verse 13 and we may have a brief question time at the end if you have questions from the previous messages or concerning what we're dealing with here, uh, there will be an opportunity. But re reading from Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 13. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, that is Magog, art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil? Let's pray together here tonight. Father, we thank you, O God, that we are here as your people, redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. Our faith is in Jesus Christ, that he is coming back soon, and that you have placed us here to be here, to be witnesses, nor God, of events that were written 2,600 years ago. And we are watching them come into place right now. Father, I pray, O oh God, open our hearts nor God, that as we see the fulfilling of Bible prophecy, that the revelation, the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ would grip us, that we'd be on fire for God, that we'd be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, that we'd be winning souls to you, nor God, that we'd live in holiness and purity in a very dark and evil hour. My God, I pray, bless us tonight. Let a fire burn within our hearts. Give us a hunger. My God, to see a revival and in gathering of a great harvest of souls. We know, O oh God, that on the back of Ezekiel's war, that you have promised and prophesied and written into the word that you're going to pour out your spirit upon Jerusalem and that that revival is going to go worldwide. And my God, we're making ourselves ready. We're preparing ourselves. We're not mere intellectual theologians of prophecy. We're not debaters about doctrine, but my God, we're the bride of Christ making herself ready for some of the greatest events in world history. Lord God, I pray, make this message to play its part tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We're coming to the fourth part in this short series. First of all, we dealt with is Russia in Bible prophecy? We looked at that and I proved it from scripture that Magog is Russia. What Magog was in Ezekiel's day, Russia is today. And it was prophesied 2,600 years ago that we could see what is just about to happen. We went further in dealing with clarifying the biblical teaching of Magog and Gog. There's a lot of confusion about Bible prophecy within the churches of our hour and generation. And so we always have to stick with scripture. Be very careful what you get caught up in. Then last time we began to deal with who are the mer merchants of Tarshish. And in fact, I didn't fully answer the question 
I only got as far as revealing to you and proving to you who is Tarshish because you would have stoned me if I wouldn't have finished that part of the message before we closed. But here I want to go further and lay out the full picture of who are the merchants of Tarshish. Notice in this verse, in verse 13, it doesn't merely say Tarshish. It talks about the merchants of Tarshish who are connected to Tarshish. And in fact, it talks about young lions that are connected to Tarshish. They're not just young lions. They have an actual connection to Tarshish. And we see Sheba and Dedan. All of these nations or institutions are connected to Tarshish. And we proved last time that Tarshish, I believe, is Britain or Britain and Ireland or these 10 isles in an extraordinary way. At this present time, you see, this wasn't happening 10 years ago or 20 years ago. We are now getting evidence and proof from archaeology and from 10 experts who are doing tests that couldn't be done 20 years ago. And they're all proven how gold and tin from Cornwall, Cornwall and the south of England found its way 2000 BC, 2000 years before Christ, to the islands of Crete and to the island of Cyprus. And a thousand years before Christ, you have gold, or so you have tin just off the shore of Israel. And where did it have its source? Cornwall. So we see that in ancient days, don't believe the historians, secular historians. They'll show you a picture as if we are so primitive that all we had was little paddling boats that wouldn't have got across the Shannon. I want to tell you, in ancient days, they circumferenced the world in their boats. They went from nation to nation, continent to continent, trading in a remarkable way. And so why does Ezekiel 38, why does the Holy Spirit give us a prophecy for our day about the merchants of Tarshish? Well, we know why God gives us this information. In the previous chapters, we read of Israel being regathered as a nation from all nations of the world. It's only happened once in all of history. Do you know why the Bible says he reveals us? That you may know that I am the Lord. Seventy-two times in the book of Ezekiel, he says this statement. I'm telling you this, giving you this prophecy, that you might know that I am God. And so here in Ezekiel 38, he gives us information that Russia or Magog is going to join with Turkey, with Iran, with Sudan, with Libya, Algeria, Armenia, and some other groups to actually invade Israel. He gives us the exact information in detail. But notice here in this verse 13, there is an opposition to it. This Muslim army led and armed by Russia invades Israel. And who is it who opposes or stands against? It's Sheba and Dedan. It's the merchants of Tarshish. And notice that the merchants of Tarshish are against this invasion and they speak against it. They exist today. If Russia is being put in place with Turkey and Iran, so are the merchants of Tarshish. Just like God is putting Russia in its place and Turkey and all of these individual nations, and I'm watching them all very clearly get ready. I'm also watching the rise of the merchants of Tarshish who are going to play a part in this. And I believe the young lions are in place. And we're going to find out who they all are so that we understand this very, very clearly in a very real way. Do you know the ancient name of China is only mentioned once in the entire Bible? It's mentioned in Isaiah 49 verse 12. Behold, there shall come from far and lo, these from the north and from the west and these from the land of Sinem, or from the east, in other words. 
That's the only time the ancient name for China, the Far East, is mentioned in the Bible. Only once. And yet Tarshish is mentioned 28 times in our Bible. And I believe it is actually Britain. And we're going to go further in this. But let me, to give you a context of the merchants of Tarshish, let me point something out before I expound this one verse, and it's very important. If you were to turn to Ezekiel 38, we're still in the same book. This is previous to chapter 38. When you go to Ezekiel 38, sorry, 28, you read there a prophecy against Tyre. Tyre is just about to be judged. Do you remember what Tyre is? It is the main city behind the Phoenicians. The merchants of Tarshish go out from the city of Tyre. It is in present day Lebanon. And you'll remember that's the city that the king of that city used to be friends with King David and with Solomon. And they joined together to send ships to Tarshish and to bring back all of their goods. But in Ezekiel chapter 28, there's something very strange that goes on. This is the capital of the Phoenician people of all of this worldwide trade. They had hundreds of ports all through the Mediterranean, at least every 30 miles. Beyond the Straits of Gerbalta, one Greek writer said they had 300 colonies outside the Mediterranean, 300 colonies. And so this people of Phoenicians who were merchants of the sea, they were traders, they were extraordinarily wealthy. Here's a prophecy about God's judgment on Tyre. And listen, the first 10 verses of it, listen to this very carefully. The first 10 verses are a prophecy against the prince of Tyre. The prince of Tyre is a man. He's the political leader. When you begin to read these 10 verses, he has become extremely proud and arrogant. He thinks he's wiser than Daniel. Through all of their trade and commerce, they have become extraordinarily rich. And here's a prophecy, God speaking, saying, you think you're God. You actually call yourself a God. And he says, I'm about to judge you. And he calls him the Prince of Tyre. That's the first 10 verses. Then he goes a bit further, verse 11 to verse 19. He then changed direction and he speaks to the king of Tyre. Who is the king of Tyre? He says, you're that cherub that was in heaven in the hill of the Lord. You're that cherub anointed of God. You're that cherub that was in the Garden of Eden. And what is he called the king of Tyre? So the prince of Tyre was a man, a political leader, who actually began to get very high thoughts and think, I'm like God. I'm richer than anyone on the world. This is just before God judges the Phoenician Empire. With all their trade and their commerce, they have reached the very height of wealth. There's no one like them. And God is about to send Nebuchadnezzar against them to bring them down. Then he'll send Alexander the Great to finally bring Tyre down. I'm showing you what's going to happen in the end days. If you understand what I've just said there and what I'm about to say, you're going to begin to understand what is happening in our day. Do you realize the king of Sar? Tyre is Lucifer, the devil, Satan, the serpent, the deceiver, the liar. Do you realize in these days, just before the rise of Nebuchadnezzar, do you know where Satan himself made his base? Do you know what city he chose? Do you know what throne? Do you know what system he chose? He chose worldwide commerce, international trade. He chose the richest city on the earth, the most remarkable merchants in the world. You know what the devil said? That's where I'm making my headquarters. A bit later, he makes Pergamos Satan's seat, his seat where he sits. 
And so through history, Satan has chosen the city of Tyre or the city of Pergamos or maybe the city of Rome. And he takes up his residence behind the prince of Tyre who began to think, I'm God, get very proud and was extremely wealthy. The devil was behind that man. You're dealing with a master businessman who traded the world, the nations, and kept it hidden from the Greeks. <laughs> Brilliant man. Wonder where he got his wisdom and his ability. And I wonder where he got his pride. If you understand that, I have just told you and opened something up that you can understand what is happening in this hour. If you were the devil, where would you choose at this particular moment? Would you choose some national king? Would you choose some politician? Do you think they really have all the power? Let's peel this back a little bit. As we begin to expound, we're expounding one verse. Many people preach and teach on Magog and understand that. And when you come to Ezekiel 38 and 39, Everybody is pretty clear, even if they get it wrong, they have an idea of the other nations. But Tarshish is left blank. Very few people explain who the young lions are or what the merchants of Tarshish are doing here. We know about them in the past, but where are they in the 21st century? We are going to look at this here right now. Look with me again at verse 13. Look at the opposition against Russia with its Muslim army invading Israel. It says that Sheba and Dedan speak against it. Do you know who Sheba and Dedan are? When you begin to study, you find in Ezekiel 27 that they are caught up in the world trade with Tyre in ancient days. They were known in Ezekiel's day when he gave this prophecy. They were well involved with worldwide trade. Also, we find that in Genesis 25, that Sheba and Dedan are descendants of Abraham. In Isaiah 21, we find that they are in Arabia. And so we could go on. Do you know it's only recently archaeologists have dug up the ruins of Sheba and Dedan. I love archaeology. I, I love it. It's the Christian's friend. It's the Bible's friend. Because you know what? All through the past few hundred years, when archaeologists and historians and experts and academics tell us that our Bible's wrong, they always become fools. Because they're wrong every time they lift their voice or their pen against the Bible and say, we know better than the Bible. Every single time they're proven wrong. And so in recent years, they have dug up the ancient ruins of these two kingdoms, Sheba and Dedan. Do you know where it is? It's Saudi Arabia. That's where you actually find it. And if you go back to Ezekiel 27, where I said this, prophecy was. It talks about those who are trading together. Sheba, Dedan, Tarshish is trading with Tyre. So notice 2,600 years ago, the nations that are trading together, that know each other, actually right now at this point in history, those same nations are going to be trading together. Only God can know that that these nations are still going to be in the world scene, still heavily involved in trade, still standing together. And when Russia invades, these nations are going to speak against it. Do you know Saudi Arabia is it going to be against Russia invading Israel? And Saudi Arabia is a Muslim nation that until three years ago used to say we're against Israel. But suddenly they let it out in their media for the first time. Actually, we're very pro-Israel. Do you know, Saudi Arabia isn't going to join Russia. It's not going to join Iran or Turkey or Sudan or Libya. It's not going to join them. It's going to stay outside of that. Even though they're Muslims, it will not attack Israel. 
What a remarkable thing our Bible is, that it predicts nations what they're going to do thousands of years before they do it. God actually knows everything. And do you not think he knows about you and that he cares about you when you love him and you seek after him? Don't you know he cares about you tonight? Don't you know he loves you tonight? Don't you know he's in, he, he gets involved in your life and he steers your path even to hear the gospel? Isn't he wonderful? Notice what else it says in this first sheep and Dadan and the merchants of Tarshish, I'm not going there yet, with all the young lions thereof. Notice the young lions are connected to Tarshish. Tarshish has merchants, but it also has young lions. Let's look at who these young lions are. Who is Tarshish? Britain, the British Isles. And please, as Irish people, don't get offended with that term. Do you know it goes way back before the Gales ever arrived on our so uh, soil? Do you know it goes back hundreds of years before Christ? These isles by the Greeks were called the British Isles. And some writers say the word, ancient word for Britain, mean it's connected to islands of tin. That's what it's connected to. So don't get into politics. Before there was ever an Englishman in Britain, the Britons were there. They got pushed out by the English, the Anglo-Saxons as they come in. So be very careful here. But with all the young lions thereof, Tarshish in our last message, we showed it is Britain. But who are the young lions connected to Tarshish, the young lions. Because you know what? All the young lions are going to rise up when Russia invades Israel. The young lions are going to speak out against. Saudi Arabia is going to make its voice heard. And the young lions are going to rise up. And the merchants of Tarshish, and they're all going to be unified against Russia. And just maybe by the end of this message, we're going to find that what has been happening since January is very much involved with aligning nations to get them ready for that hour. Have you ever seen Russia accused of so much? They got accused of getting Trump into power when he got elected in 2016. It's the Russians' fault. Do you know when there was a cyber attack on Irish hospitals just one year ago and they lost all of our files? Do you know who they said done it? It was Russia. And isn't this what we've heard? Everything is Russia. Biden says it. The EU say it. The Irish government say it. It's always Russia. And so you're seeing everyone align in a very real way against Russia. There's a unification against Russia coming about in our world. And I would never justify Russia. It's evil what Russia's been doing. And you know what? God is going to judge Russia very, very soon. Look at Britain for a moment. A small nation. Who could have prophesied 2,600 years ago that Tarshish would again be existing in the end days? Have merchants all over the world connected by her and have young lions joining together with her. Tarshish as Britain grew into a large worldwide empire, extraordinarily. What is an empire? It is a group of nations ruled over by one monarch or one form of leadership. And Great Britain began to establish its empire in the 16th century when Elizabeth I was Queen of England. All of her enemies were against her. Entire armies were coming against her. It didn't look like she could exist. She was a weak nation. She had very little wealth. She was about to be destroyed. And yet I believe God protected her at that point because there were real preachers in Britain at that time. In the 16th century, there began the rise of this little nation, Britain. And over the following centuries, it was going to establish dominions, colonies, protectorates, mandates, and territories right across the entire world. In the 18th century, she began to rise to visible power. You could actually see it. By the 19th century, she was the greatest naval power in the entire world. No naval power could match her. 
In fact, she built an empire that was bigger than any empire in all of world history. No empire has ever matched the British Empire. She ruled over a quarter of the entire world's population. She owned or possessed or ruled over a quarter of the entire landmass of the world. It was a ginormous empire. They painted the map red. They said that the sun never set on the British Empire. Always somewhere there was a part of the British Empire where the sun was shining down right around the clock. They built an extraordinary empire. And in fact, we're the first Western superpower of all of history. Do you know within that empire, they raised up North America, Australia, New Zealand. They owned land all through Asia, from the top of Africa to the bottom of Africa. The map was painted red. They went in and took over entire regions of Africa. And I'm not justifying that. I'm just telling you what happened to this little, tiny, tin trading country of Tarshish. She's got raised up over the centuries to be a global power. Do you know, as signs of the end of her empire became, began to show forth, they began to talk about greater Britain, building a greater Britain or a global empire. And they changed their name to the British Commonwealth. So they moved from British Empire to British Commonwealth. Do you know who the man was behind creating the term British Commonwealth? Said, we, we want to make it look a bit better here. Do you know he was a globalist who said, we don't want only a British world empire. We want a worldwide, one world government empire. All the men behind this. And America and Britain were working together. They wanted a transatlantic union between America and Britain, bring America back in, and then we would use America to bring about a world government. This was spoken about 150 years ago. They were planning it. And so they wanted a union of Western nations that would become the worldwide global power. I'm telling you about Tarshish or Britain. But who are the young lions of Tarshish? You see, I believe Tarshish is the mother lioness. And she gave birth to distinct nations of the world. The term here used in the Hebrew, young lions, is the word kafir in the Hebrew. It's used 32 times. Some people say in some of the new Bible versions say it should be villages. Written here should be the merchants of Tarshish and her villages. No, it shouldn't. Out of 32 times, only once is the word tent used to translate this. The other 31 times, it's always talking about real young lions. That's what it's talking about. Here in this verse, what does it mean by young lions? What are young lions in this prophecy? Let me show you from Ezekiel again, in Ezekiel chapter 19. It's speaking about nations, and it's saying that nations are called lions. Listen to it. And say, what is thy mother? A lioness. It's speaking about Israel as a nation. And it says that nation of Israel is a lioness, a female mature lion. A lioness. She lay down among the lions, other nations. She nourished her whelps. In other words, she had baby lions. And you know what a whelp is? It needs fed. It needs protected. It needs cared for. It can't kill its own prey. And so a whelp is a baby lion. This mother, which is Israel, is a lioness. And she's raising little babies or little whelps among the young lions, and she brought up one of her whelps. It became a young lion. Now notice this, that's the term there, a young lion. So we're beginning to see what are young lions. There's got to be a mother lioness who raises them up from being little whelps or little cubs. And after being a little cub, you become a young lion. And listen to what a young lion is here. It says, 
and it learned to catch the prey. It devoured men. And so you see, what is a young lion? It's a nation that's been raised up by a mother lioness. And you can tell when she's a young lion because this new nation becomes independent. It began, begins to catch its own prey, to fend for itself, to fight for itself. It strays away from mommy and it stands on its own four feet. That's how you tell a young lion. It goes out into the world. But really what you're talking about in Ezekiel 19 is that a young lion is a brand new nation being raised up from a mother lioness. You know who the mother lioness was? It was Tarshish. In ancient Bible prophecies, Britain was going to be a mother lioness that was going to give birth to other lions, young lions that would become independent, not joined to her, not dependent on her anymore. And they would go out and fight their own battles. They would get their own food. They would stand independently from her. Who are these young lions? connected to Tarshish. They're the young lions of Tarshish. Who are they? The first young lion was the American colonies. 13 British, and they were British. Sorry for my friends in America. They were British colonies. They were under British rule, British law, British military power. It was a young whelp birthed by Tarshish, and she gave birth to an entire new nation. Who could have imagined then that America would become what it is today? When she began to break free of Tarshish or Great Britain, of course, the Irish were there, weren't they? Do you know that a third of the Revolutionary Army, one out of every three soldiers in the field fighting the British, do you know where they're from? They descended from the Scots-Irish or the Northern Irish, mostly around Antrim and Down. Two thirds, sorry, one third of the entire Revolutionary Army. Washington, that great general leading, who become the first president, you know what he said? He said, if I have to make my last stand and be defeated, I, I want to stand with the Scots-Irish. We, we'll make our last stand with those Scots-Irish. And so these islands gave birth to other nations, to young lions who rose up. We know how many presidents of America, they descend, almost everyone, even Obama, just out the road here, you've got the Obama uh, stop-off fuel station, and you go in there and see someone with a white face, with Irish ears sticking out, but it's Obama's face on it. Do you realize that connection America has? She was one of the first colonies of this lioness as she was being raised up to be a worldwide empire in an extraordinary way. Now America is a world power. She stands on her own feet, fights her own battles. There's a little sideline. Do you know who is behind the creation of the U European Union? Do you, do you know who financed it? Do you know whose idea it was? It wasn't Britain's, it wasn't Germany's, it wasn't France. It was the CIA. I'm going to do a video on that, mention it soon. But the CIA in the 50s talked through the entire plan. I can prove this. And they're the main means pouring in all the finance to create a European Union. One united European Union because they want a global government. But that's the first lion. Where are the other young lands? Remember, we have a prophecy for our generation that says all the young lions are going to be united against Russia invading Israel. Do you begin to see? So you've got Tarshish, the old motherland. You've got America, the United States. She's going to be a young lion. Is there others? There's Canada. Do you know that the Queen of England is still the head of state in Canada? You go into their parliament, it's exactly like Britain. So much of Canada's legislation, she's still part of the British Commonwealth. The British had to fight the France, fight, fight France to gain power. And here come in a, another entire nation that used to be a colony. If you understand about the Phoenicians thousands of years ago, you begin to understand what's happening here. It's the exact same thing. Tarshish 
began to send colonists out right across this world. You go to Canada, you can hear an Irish accent there. I, I can hear that lilt. When you go to certain areas, you've got Scottish tribes or chiefs, chieftains that were sent to Scotland, cleared off their land and sent to Canada. And so Canada become another young lioness, but she gained her independence. What about Australia? Australia was birthed out of Britain again. All the native peoples in these nations were moved to the side and you had a very white, Western, English-speaking people raised up right across Australia again. English is the language of Australia. If you go to Australia, you find English, Scottish, Welsh, Irish, all across Australia. Not just in this generation, but for generations, 100 gen uh, years, 200 years. And they all go back and say, I'm from England just like the Americans do, and just like the Canadians do. You also have New Zealand is another young lion. I believe this prophecy is talking about America, Tur Britain, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, as all being young lions that are going to rise up in this last hour. And we're actually there. They're going to be unified with Saudi Arabia. But there's also the merchants of Tarshish. And they're all going to be unified. Do you know, just before the First World War, when the war was going to break out, Great Britain put out posters all across the world. And Britain was depicted as a lioness. And in those posters, calling people to fight against Germany, you had a picture of all these young lions. And it was actually written, Canada, America, Australia, New Zealand, they're called by name. And if you Google it, you'll see these posters that went out. And Britain began to call, we're calling on the young lands to come stand with us to fight in this European war, the First World War. And you get that time and time again. The lion is a symbol of Britain. And those young lions have been talked about for hundreds of years. There's no mystery here. These nations are the young lions. Of course, Britain affected other countries like India, Pakistan, Burma, Gibraltar, and many others were all a part of this in a very unique way. I believe we're preparing to come to a very unique time. Who are the merchants of Tarshish? The word merchants here is sacker. It means someone who travels around, someone who sells or trades. It's talking about businessmen. So I've just told you about the Western powers. They're all together in NATO and a military alignment together right across the Western world. When we talk about the young lands, we're talking about the English speaking Western world, nations that were birthed out of Tarshish or out of Britain. They're nations. But who are the merchants of Tarshish? We've got Britain here. We've got Saudi Arabia. We've got the Western nations. Who are the merchants of Tarshish? They're businessmen. What Phoenicia was thousands of years ago, what Phoenicia done in trading by boats, making herself very rich, the merchants of Tarshish are the middlemen they are the businessmen of the world. They are the rich men of the world. Who were the richest men in Solomon's day? Solomon was rich. Tyre was rich. But so were all the Phoenicians, all of their hundreds of little cities, villages, ports, colonies. And those colonies existed to make money. They were businessmen. They knew where to sell, when to sell, how to sell. Do you know we've got no written history from them? They were an educated people. They wrote much, yet we have nothing existed right down to us. No writings or no history from them. I wonder if it was deliberate. They didn't want the Greeks to get it. They didn't want the Romans to get it. But they were writers. They were academics. They taught the Greeks how to write. They taught the Greeks how to use an alphabet. 
that taught the Romans how to use education. But yet we have nothing written from that entire culture. But you know what? They were the merchants of the ancient world. Now we're going to see another group of merchants that are going to rise up. These merchants, which the Bible prophesied about 2,600 years ago. Notice it doesn't say just the kings of the earth or the nations are going to rise up against Magog. It doesn't say that. It says these merchants, these businessmen, these rich men, these worldwide traders who are involved in ships in this generation, these merchant shipping companies, trading products are going to speak out very, very clearly. Who are the major businessmen of this hour? Do you realize they're the 1% of the 1%? The businessmen of this hour right now are richer than any nations. Do you know individual men like Gates could buy and sell nations? At the minute all through America, he's buying up all the land he possibly can. These rich men that own Amazon, that are behind Google, that are behind Facebook, do you notice how many of them are Western and come up out of the young lands of Tarshish. Do you see, it's not dominated by China or Russia or any of these other nations. The merchants of Tarshish are those who specifically trade with Tarshish and all of her young lions. And they are the richest men of this hour. You know what? They are going to speak out against Russia. Do you see what's happening at the minute? It's all the businesses. Even McDonald's pulled out of Russia at the minute. And the banks are coming in on this. And the businessmen are coming in on this. And even the World Economic Forum with Klaus Schwab has shut the door in the face of Per Putin. Who are the merchants of Tarshish? The World Economic Forum. Klaus Schwab stands at the head of it. Do you realize the World Economic Forum are businessmen? They're not politicians primarily. They are businessmen, and yet the World Economic Forum has signed an agreement with the UN to affect world politics. The IMF, with all of its worldwide wealth and its influence on world banking, has joined itself to these businessmen. Do you realize the World Economic Forum, the businessmen of the world, are maneuvering the nations, especially the Western nations? Do you know Klaus Schwab? He trained up the Prime Minister of New Zealand and of Canada. He influences Australia. Every politician in Britain for 20 years has been influenced by that man. Do you know he claims, although you didn't know his face until two years ago, and I knew very little about him until two and a half years ago, do you know that he claims and boasts to have known every political leader worldwide for 40 years? He knew all the key players before any of us ever seen them come in the world scene. And so you've got these merchant men, businessmen, traders, bankers, these men that trade worldwide. Do you know they're playing a very important hour, place in this hour? And in the past two years, you've got power over the past two years. Do you realize that? Your money is worth less now than it was two years ago. Do you realize what you've got in your bank isn't worth as much as it was two years ago? Do you realize your pay packet isn't as worth as much? And yet all these merchants are exploding with wealth over this two years. They have become extraordinarily rich through this crisis. And you know what? They're going to get an awful lot richer in these days ahead. Everything happening to Russia, it'll affect your fuel prices, it'll affect your mortgage, it'll affect you buying food in a terrible way. It's not hurting Russia, it's hurting you. And yet the Western rich merchants are getting very rich out of all of this. You know, the Bible speaks about this very clearly. Look at Tarshish for a minute. Listen to this carefully. Tarshish or Britain got out of Europe in 2016. 
Do you know it was restricted from doing certain things until they got out of Europe? But now, as of last year, they're full steam ahead. What are they doing? They're actually setting about to create a thing called free ports. Britain is establishing 10 free ports in Britain. The experts say you only want one within a nation, but Britain's putting 10 because it makes the people poor, but it'll make the merchants of the world very rich. What are these free ports? You can have a area near an airport, and this is gonna come very close to home in a second, near an airport or a city or a port. And in that free port, you don't pay tariffs or taxes. You can have businessmen in there and businesses function. It attracts trade. Dubai has one and they're very prosperous. It's one of the biggest, so is Singapore, but so is the Thames. Britain is gonna establish these free ports. Do you know who created this idea of a free port? Have a guess. The Phoenicians were the inventor. They said, you go into a country and you establish this port or this area, you don't pay any taxes, you're independent, you have your own laws. Right now, Britain is beginning to establish, this is their way forward. And they said, one of the three main things that we're gonna trade through our ports is pharmaceuticals. And this is gonna make us rich again. And we're gonna become one of the greatest world traders. That's what Britain is saying at the minute. They said, we're out of Europe, so we're not hindered by their laws anymore. And we're gonna to begin to create this and bring trade in from all the world. PM Boris is going all over the world saying, I want to open up merchant trade with Asia and with Australia and with all of these nations. We want to be a global power. They're pouring a fortune into their navy at the minute. They're pouring a fortune into their ships again. They're rebuilding everything. You're going to have in these free ports warehouses. You will not pay tax. You don't even come under all the laws of the local nation. And those that trade there are gonna become extremely, extremely wealthy. Within the EU, they limit this. In fact, do you know that the EU only had one real significant free port throughout Europe? Do you know where it was? Is Shannon Free Port, it was called. Just down the road outside of Shannon Airport. It was established in 1959, and it somewhat closed in 2016. The EU come in on it and said a country can't function with all of this. You've had it on your doorstep, and you didn't even realize, absolutely free for business. We won't tax you, there'll be great benefits. They brought all the big businesses into Ireland, saying we'll look after you businessmen. Do you see what's happening? The merchants of the earth are getting very rich and have great power with individual nations. And it was there on our doorstep, 600 acres, 100 major companies trading worldwide. Do you know the merchants of the earth in Bible prophecy are going to play a very big bet in our generation? When you go to Revelation 18, the end of time, there's going to be a new city called Babylon, rebuilt in Iraq, I believe. Ancient Babylon will get restored as a mega city. And you know what it talks about? That city, when it gets built by Antichrist, and if you read it, Revelation 18, you're going to see all of this. The kings and the merchants of the earth are mentioned there, and they're mentioned separately. Do not confuse the kings with the merchants in the last days. Lots of people in Bible prophecy are saying, maybe the merchants will become the ten kings. No, they won't. In Bible prophecy, kings are political leaders. Merchants are businessmen. They're gonna to work together, but they're utterly distinct. In Revelation 18, it talks about the city of Babylon or this new political economic system is gonna make the merchants of the earth very, very rich. What we're seeing now, all these Western merchants are very rich, but that's nothing. They're gonna get extremely rich. And listen, in Revelation 18, 23, 
talking about these same merchants. For thy merchants that are trading with Babylon were the great men of the earth, the richest, most famous, most influential. Listen to what it says. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. The word pharmacia, pharmaceuticals. So we see in the last days, we see that Russia, notice what's going to happen. Russia's going to fall. Iran's going to fall. Turkey's going to fall. Islam is going to fall. And you're going to have these young lions, Saudi Arabia. You're going to have the merchants of the earth rising up and speaking against Russia. What's going to happen worldwide when Russia falls? You're beginning to see something rise up in our world government. These men want a world government. And you know what? They're going to be a part of Antichrist system. And you know how they're going to deceive all nations is through trade and pharmaceuticals. Do you know how many people in Ireland are addicted to pharmaceuticals? I'm not talking about drugs off the high street, bought in a house down the back street. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about businessmen. I'm talking about mothers at home and they're addicted to drugs. Candace has been watching this recently. It's a pandemic in America. COVID was nothing. This is the real pandemic. Do you know how many people secretly are addicted to medical drugs? to morphine, and to many others. The doctors give me it. It's on, in, on prescription. I just keep going to a different doctor. And they're utterly addicted and reliant on those things. And if you try to come off them, you're going to get a violent reaction in your body. But the doctor gave it to you. This verse shows that the merchants of the earth are going to deceive the nations through pharmaceuticals as well as the politicians deceiving through technology. I believe we're actually there. I believe we're at a vital, important time in world history. And so, saints, I'm showing you that in this prophecy, we're the unique hour. I, I showed you Iran and Russia and Turkey and these other nations. But also you've got what's going to rise up in that hour. For Russia to fall, we're going to see a world government arise and we're going to see these men joining together. Merchants, businessmen are going to be as important as any national politician of Britain or America or Australia. And they're going to begin bringing all of this together. And I believe they're going to be set up for deception. Do you know how dangerous wealth is? Do you realize if God gave you what you think you need and desire, it could destroy your soul. Do you know how dangerous wealth is like the king of Tyre where we began? Because of your riches, you become very proud. Because of all of your trade, you believe that you are God. Haven't we seen it with these men? The World Economic Forum are now saying you can be God. You can join yourself to the internet. We're going to have brain chips. We're moving into transhumanism. God is dead. There is no God. You don't have a soul. They are going to trade in souls. And in Revelation 18, it says one of the things they trade in is the bodies of men. You know, slavery is going to be a part of things in the last day where they're going to trade men and women. You are going to become a commodity in this political system that arises, a thing to be sold and a thing to be bought. Let me finish. Because I'd hate to leave it there. Do you know Tarshish isn't just mentioned in this connection? There are several prophecies about Tarshish. And this is what I want to leave you with. Let me go through these very quickly because it's beautiful. I hope Ireland, when you hear these, you're going to go, I hope Ireland's part of Tarshish. You're going to see it is. Psalm 72 verse 10. Listen to what it says. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Psalm 72 verse 10 is a beautiful song. It's written by King David to his son 
Solomon. And it's all this beautiful message about a worldwide reign of Messiah who's going to come in the future. It's a message to his son. Isn't it amazing that in David's day and in Solomon's day, they knew who Tarshish was. They both traded with Tarshish through the Phoenician merchants. Do you see what's happening here? And yet we have a prophecy about the coming Messiah. Let me prove it. In verse 5 of that psalm, it says, They shall fear thee, that is God, as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. Verse 8, He, that is the Messiah, the one who's going to reign, he shall have dominion from sea to sea. How do I know that's a millennium and not eternity? I'll tell you why. There's no sea in the new heaven and the new earth. There's no sea. I'm sorry about that. But in the millennium, there's sea. And it says the Messiah is going to reign from sea to sea over all nations. That's where he's going to reign. In verse 11, yea, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. So look at the whole environment. It's talking about the worldwide reign of Jesus Christ on earth. It's talking about an hour when all nations are going to worship the Lord, where he's going to have ultimate governmental power over the nations. In verse 19, and blessed be the glorious, his glorious name forever, and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Right in the midst of this, in verse 10, it says, the kings of Tarshish and of the isles will bring presents unto him. Do you know there's a prophecy about Tarshish or the isles of the sea, and they're going to bring presents to the Messiah in the Middle East again? Do you know the t- ships of Tarshish are going to trade with Israel again? And the kings of these islands are actually going to bring presents to the Messiah when he reigns upon the earth from shore to shore, from ocean to ocean, when he has absolute dominion. Tarshish is going to be a nation that serves the Lord in the millennium. But there's more. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 16. And upon all the ships of Tarshish and upon all the pleasant pictures. Isaiah 2 is talking about the millennium again. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto her. It goes further in saying, you will teach us, he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his ways. He shall judge among the nations. And then listen, they shall beat their swords and plowshares and Spears and the pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. There's not going to be any war for a thousand years. This prophecy talks about the day Messiah comes back, the Lord Jesus Christ returns again, and there's going to be worldwide peace for a thousand years. It says it's going to be on the day of the Lord, and on that day, He's going to bring down the pride of all nations. And listen to what a part of that is. And upon the ships of Tarshish. All the merchants of the world, he's going to bring their pride down. When he comes back, their pride is going to be flattened. And they're going to change to begin to worship the Messiah again. What about Isaiah chapter 60 verse 9? Surely the isles shall wait for me. And the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far. It's talking about the millennium. Do you know who's going to come up first to go worship the Messiah? The ships of Tarshish, the merchants, the boats. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to carry people to worship the Messiah. That's what Tarshish is going to be caught up in, in, is in global worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Saints, I'm giving you an extraordinary picture of Tarshish as an actual nation operating in the millennium. Or in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 19, I will set a sign among them and I will send those that escape of them unto the nations, to Tarshish. It's talking about the day that Jesus Christ comes back and he's going to judge the nations. 
He's going to destroy the armies that come against Israel. And what does he do to those that survive Armageddon? He says he's going to send them back to their nations, to Tarshish, Pul, Lud, all that draw the bow, to Tabul, Javan, to the isles afar off, or the islands, that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. All these verses and other ones talk and prophesy about Tarshish in the last days. Tarshish traded with Solomon and with King David. The Phoenicians had a worldwide trade as far as Tarshish. And we are told that the merchants of Tarshish are going to be here. You know what? I believe right now we're looking at the merchants of Tarshish. I believe Bill Gates is a merchant of Tarshish. I believe his genealogy, do you know his genealogy goes right back to England? And he had an ancestor that was at the side of the king of England. You can trace his genealogy all the way back. And all these merchants of the earth, they all go back to the same source. And what we're watching is something that was prophesied 2,600 years ago. And you know what this tells me? You're going to know the Lord, that he is God. You're going to know that this Bible is true. Because where, where, why should I fear the merchants of the earth and their pharmaceuticals and world government when I know I'm part of a plan to bring in a worldwide government reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all these men, after they do their bit, Jesus is coming back again and will establish on the earth. And I believe Ireland will be caught up in that. And I believe Britain will be caught up in that. And I believe the young lions will be caught up in that in going to worship the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you, Lord God, tonight that you'd even give us these prophecies which even show us the judgment that is coming on these merchants of Tarshish. My God, thank you, God, that you predict things thousands of years before they happen and that you show us so that we will not be afraid. We will not be in fear of men or systems, of the rich of the earth or the kings of the earth. But, oh God, we know that there's a judgment coming on all these businessmen and traders and financers and these wealthy rich men of the world you are going to judge them and father we pray have mercy on this generation send us a revival as we see these things come to place as all these nations and peoples are in place you are going to send a revival on the back of Ezekiel's war. You're going to pour out your spirit again. You're going to move amidst the nations one last time before they're given over to deception. And Father, we pray, be very gracious with us in this city that we might touch this city with the gospel of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we love you, Lord.